Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Tuesday, the 16th of August. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning on Match Day, of course, by uh, Johnny McFarlane. How are we doing, Johnny? Good, mate. Good. Looking forward to having a chat, and obviously looking forward to the game tonight. I think it's going to be an absolute cracker. Yeah, I certainly think so myself. Um, before we talk about the game, folks, uh, as you can see, the little ticker below, we still get that offer on the website. £2 for two months' worth of content. We're practically giving it away. So many of you signing up, so uh, thank you for doing so. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. And what I'll do is, as normal, I'll stick in uh, the link in the comments section. Uh, so if you uh, click on that, you can uh, find out how to sign up. Just £2.99 per month thereafter. It's an absolute bargain. Um, OK, let's talk uh, football, Johnny. Um, huge game this evening. The first of two legs, of course, uh, against PSV Eindhoven for a place in the group stages of the Champions League. Um, first time Rangers would have been in there since, uh, what, 2010, I believe. Um, so long time in coming. But um, PSV... Certainly no mugs, one of the, the, the most recognisable names in European football. Um, of course, there's uh, the Dutch uh, connection with uh, Gio going up against uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy. It's got all the makings of an absolute cracker, this Johnny, doesn't it? But um, Rangers are going to have to be at their best to get through. There can be no off nights like we've seen in Belgium. Absolutely. Uh, this is going to be a really, really tough tie, Derek, um, and... As Giovanni van Bronckhorst himself has said, I think 50-50 really. Uh, much will depend on how tonight goes. If Rangers get a really good win, I see um, Niemi1872 saying 4-0, easy peasy. Well, uh. that would really, I think, put the tie to bed. Um, but yeah, a 1-0, a 2-0, it's still really, really going to be a struggle over there because they're, they're a top team. Um, so Rangers do need some sort of lead and preferably one that, that is decisive. Whether or not they can get that or not, we'll have to wait and see. The thing that worries me about PSV, if I'm honest, Eric, is um, two players that have been heavily linked with the Rangers, so I know quite well, are Javi Simons and... Uh, or Simmons, I don't know how you pronounce it. You uh, know? Simons. Simons. Javi yeah. Simons and um, Joey Veerman. Both these guys are top-class ballers. Like, they are technical... Uh, really, really, really good players. And I think that, that they have already settled in quite well um, in terms of Ehrman signed, I think, in January last year. Uh, yep. Simon's arrived this summer. But I think these two are different gravy and um, try to get the ball off them maybe maybe a problem. The PSV, from what I'm reading, from what I'm seeing, I don't think they're going to come out and necessarily go for the jugular at Ibrox. I think they might be quite... Um, Defensive, might look to kind of hit on the counter-attack. They've certainly got pace in wide areas and uh, they'll look to make that count. So I, I've got a funny feeling tonight could be a very, very, very close game, like a 1-1 draw or a, a very narrow win for Rangers. And, and then you go to Holland and it's it's absolutely huge. I certainly don't think it will be uh, easy for Rangers and any wins to get through this tie. I'll be very surprised if, for example, it's a comprehensive win tonight because... They're just too many top quality players. And just finally, my last concern is PSV's uh, weakness is set pieces in terms of defensive, but attack wise, they're very, very good. And Rangers have kind of been a little bit sloppy at set pieces uh, already this season and actually going into last season to some extent as well. So that's something I have to absolutely watch closely. And, and Connor Goldson's going to have to get a hold of Luke Dijon because he's a player that is excellent with the ball in the air and a physical target man who's been all over some of the big clubs. He's been at Barcelona, been at Sevilla, you know, so he's someone that has to be watched very, very closely. Yeah, Taylor Allen's going for a 4-1 win like we've seen in 99. He says, having your first goal, 4-1 Rangers, I would bite your hand off for that uh, right yeah, now. I think it's going to be much, much closer, though, I've got to admit, uh, two very evenly uh, matched teams. Uh, so many comments uh, coming in. Uh, we'll pick up on this uh, from, from Ian Ross. Uh, Johnny, uh, do you think uh, Gio's knowledge of the Dutch game will help us uh, tonight? Um Yes, uh, I think it will. Um, not only Gio, but of course Roy Mackay, who was at the Go Ahead Eagles uh, PSV match at the weekend. And uh, Dave Voss will know 
uh, forensically all about PSV as well. Um, so I think that that's got to be some sort of advantage. You're looking for these little uh, bits of advantage that could pro- pro- probably shade the tie. And certainly I think that's going to be one of them, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Listen, Van Bronckhorst is a really, really top-class tactician. We've seen that time and time again. He always seems to pull it out of the bag in these European ties, even if you've lost the first leg. And he finds a way, once he's seen a team especially, he finds a way. Once he's closely looked at them, the difference is tonight with a USG or a, (coughs) pardon me, Red Bull Salzburg is he'll know them already very, very closely. He'll know all these players as I say, I think um, there was a, a an interest in, in a couple of these players that are playing for PSV for Rangers. So Gio will know all of these guys, even the new guys, very, very uh, deeply. And, and that can only be a massive positive, I think, for Rangers uh, in this one. And, and I certainly think if, if, you, if PSV go through, it won't be because the team don't know how best to stop them. It will yeah. be, conversely, that they haven't been able to. Yeah. Now, listen, PSV can see goals uh, as well. What Malky 50 yeah. gets in touch, Johnny says, uh, my main concern tonight is our defence. I can see us scoring, but I don't think our defence is good enough to keep them out. And saying that, I mean, three clean sheets in the last uh, three matches, albeit I know it's uh, uh, matches in, in Scottish Premiership, but um, mm. they got the, the, the 3-0 win over, over Union over the line. Um, that's got to breed a wee bit of confidence, you'd, you'd imagine. But in terms of the back line, um, who do you see lining up for Rangers this evening? Well, that's a very, very good question. <laughs> Borna Barisic, for me, will play. Yes. Um, I don't think Yilmaz is a drop-in straight into the team signing from that first game. I think he's a guy that will need a bit of time. He's coming from a, a very different football and culture. He's a small guy. It's going to take um, a bit of adjustment to get used to how rough and tumble Scotland is, and that's, you know, what he has to deal with. So Borna Barisic, in the meantime, will be, I think, the main man at left back. Um, you know, as we understand it, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of transfer talk and rumour about uh, Borna Barisic. But I know, Derek, you've spoken to people close to Borna Barisic. I know, Derek, you've also spoken to the club. And... There's not been any bids, and no. I think the, the thing that, that we're getting when we go back to people that are close to Borna Barisic is, you know, he's he's happy at Rangers, nothing's changed, you know, he's, he's, he's not got any plans to go anywhere. Now, he came close to going to Watford, and if Watford had offered a, a reasonable sum, I think last January, I think it was, January, yeah. then, then, then he would have been away, and I think Barisic himself would have liked to have gone and played in the Premier League for understandable reasons. Um, but I think Borna Barisic is more crucial than ever almost at the moment because you, you wouldn't want to be just left with uh, a new guy just settling in, a young 21-year-old. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he plays. I'm going off yeah. on a tangent here, aren't I? Um, <laughs> right back, James Tavernier obviously picks itself. John McLaughlin, we know, is the first choice. Yes. Set back is the other one, mate. Um, Connor Goldson is, an, is a shoe-in, obviously, but who do you play next to him? Yeah. If you put in James Sands, who seems to be the guy that, that, that has been the first pick, but then isn't a natural central defender? Or just say, no, no, Ben Davis has now had the 90 minutes under his belt. We've spent big money on him. He's on big wages. He's come from Liverpool. This is the games that he was brought in for. I've got a feeling Giovanni Van Bronckhorst will go with James Sands. Me too. Personally, I would go with Ben Davies. Um, but it's a tough one because Davies is not really betted in. And if Davies is to make a mistake, then you've got a 3.5 million striker uh, uh, signing who is already off on the wrong foot, which is not what you want at Rangers. And he's not really had that time in the team to kind of bed in and, and, get, yeah. used to, and yeah. get used to it. <clears throat> It's a, it's a shame, to be honest, in this game that Phil Hollander isn't fit. Oh, he'd be perfect for it, wouldn't he? Yeah, just because it's 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 that kind of game. I don't think it's going to be either side's going to go at it, hammer and tongs. Yeah. I may be completely wrong about that. We may start the game and see Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is pushing these players right up and it's very aggressive. 
I suspect not, but you know, we'll see. But but Philip Hollander would have given you another option left footed centre half. Yeah. Um so the, I suspect it's going to be James Sands. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. Um, Brian Kane uh, seems to think he says uh, we think we might see a back three tonight. Listen, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, we've seen Giovanni van Bronckhorst tinker, especially in Europe, changing uh, formations, even in game as well. So it wouldn't surprise me as the match uh, wears on um, what he does. And he actually mentioned that in his pre-match press conference. He says he'll need to find out how PSV are approaching the game. Um, but you've got full trust that, 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 that he'll be able to identify whatever they are doing if they try and spook Rangers with whatever and, and, and adapt to it. Yeah. Well, one thing I think that, that is becoming absolutely huge, and I'm sure everyone will agree with me on this, it's just, but it's just amazing is how much of a fortress Ibrox has become. Yeah. And, you know, how do I put this? Ahead of the USG game, I knew it would be a good atmosphere, Derek, right? But I did wonder if that kind of electricity that was crackling through the entire stadium in the Europa League could be replicated because it's, for, you know, it's the start of the season. Yeah. There's a difference between a game that's played at night and there's a little bit of, um, I don't know, there's a wee, it's, it's still spring, so there's a bit of cold in the air. You know, it's it's a, di- a different atmosphere. And, and as those games were building, it was, you know, it was last 16, quarterfinal, semi-final. I mean, it's not hard to get up for those games. And against big names as well, the Rangers maybe aren't expected to go past, you know. Like, like I mean, Red Bull, you, you would not expect on paper Rangers to get past mm-hmm. them, but they did. So, USG, I was kind of expecting it to be, you know, a good atmosphere, a good Ibrox atmosphere. But everyone was saying, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible once again. And I don't know if Ibrox has almost got into this thing where it's like it's found its, its rhythm again for these European nights. And... The heartbeat is there, and yeah. teams, as Simons was saying in his presser pre-match, about there being a twelfth man. man. Yeah, the Ibrox has become this kind of almost like a force that just propels Rangers in a way that we haven't seen for maybe a decade. Well, at least a decade, more than that. Um, it's it is a genuine fortress once again, and. No one will want to come to Ibrox because it is intimidating. It's got that sort of welcome to hell factor that Galatasaray used to always have. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think that's genuinely, you can't understate how big a factor that is. Um, I don't know what you think, Derek. I mean, it, yeah, it's different though, it's different than it was. Yeah, I think since uh, that Braga game with Ibrox, baby, it's different. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it could very well be. Um, and full credit to the fans for turning up uh, for each of these European nights and playing their part. Um, it gives the players a lift. You heard John Lundstrom saying it, it, give, it gives you that extra yard of pace, extra 10%. So um, they can certainly play their part this evening. And just a reminder as well that the Rangers are wanting you to wear a blue top if you are heading to the game tonight to create a, a proper blue sea of Ibrox. It'll be quite a sight. Um, and I think it's just going to be similar uh, noise levels tonight, uh, Johnny. Um, and listen, it's it, it can spook the best of sides. We've seen it last season. We've seen it uh, in, in the last four seasons. You've got to say good quality 100%. sides coming to Ibrox and being uh, blown off their stride um, with the crowd noise. So they can Leipzig, certainly... yep. Leipzig were terrified, mate. Yeah. Um, but I mean, think even, even clubs like uh, Porto that came and were spooked. Good quality yeah. sides. Uh, uh, that came Benfica to an extent. Um, you know the teams that have, have came to Ibrox and really, you know, I mean, it's, it's it, the crowd is a factor now. Um, yeah. And it's uh, yeah, it's, it's great to see. Long may that continue. Um, just to, to, to sort of finalise your team, Johnny. I've, um, we've got a predicted lineup. So um, myself, uh, Joshua, and yeah. uh, Craig Vickers on the website, mm-hmm. folks, go and check it out. Uh, I've got a, a, maybe a, a few surprise inclusions in there. Who's your midfield, yeah. Johnny? I'd like Stephen Davis to play alongside John Lundstrom. I think yeah. the physicality of Lundstrom and the ball retention of Davis would be a, a great partnership. Um, I'm a big advocate of Stephen Davis getting more game time in this team. I totally trust you, Vanny Van Bronckhorst. And, um, you know, he knows far more about football than me. And, <coughs> you know, like I'm such an arrogant bugger. Quite a lot of the time I would uh, be like, no, 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 the manager shouldn't be doing that and the manager should be doing <laughs> this. But Gio's like earned that respect, you know, with what he did 
last season and what he's done already this season in terms of getting past what looked like a horrific and insurmountable first leg defeat. Um, so I, I trust him, but this is how I would do it. I would do Lundstrom, Davies. Um, I think um, further forwards, I'd probably go in this game just because it's going to be a little bit eeksy peeksy. I might go Arfield in front. Wow, uh, Derek. that's a bit left field. It's a bit left field, but I just know you know you're going to get the third man runs and you know you're going to get the defensive graft. Um, left, obviously, you go Ryan Kent. There's just no, no even a decision. Right, I would go Tom Lawrence. Uh, up top, Cholak. Okay, interesting. Um, and and, and, and uh, listen, I think that would be a very fluid uh, front three in terms of I'd be happy to bring on Rabi Matondo at half time or or after sixty minutes. Same with Morelos, bringing him in, depend on what the game is, uh, the game state is. But you've got loads and loads of options there. I mean, our fields. What, what's your midfield, mate? That, I mean, I know that's a controversial one, but I just I like the experience and the graft and and the late runs. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I had Tate Davis alongside Lundstrom for me. Is it the two holding midfield pair? Uh, my my, my... <laughs> It was a tough one. That my, my attacking midfield three w- w- was tough. Ryan Kent obviously plays on the left, on the right, just because of his discipline and, and he, he's trusted in these games. I'd have Scott Wright uh, with Malik Tillman. Uh, yeah, Malik and- Tillman. How, how- <laughs> <laughs> There's so many options, though, Johnny. This I'm having a nightmare here, mate. T- obviously, Tillman's going to play. Obviously, <laughs> Tillman's going to play. So Tillman on the right, mate. And that's how I would do it. I would put Tillman on the right. Yeah. Um, ahead, ahead of Lawrence, of course. Jeez, oh, man. <laughs> early, early morning for me, you know, dear. But I, I agree with you. I think Cholak is a man up front. Uh, delighted that he he started off uh, so well. You can't complain with his record, three and three. Um, he's he's gelling into this side. He's learning how to play in the system. The players, players around him are learning how to play to his strengths. Uh, and I think he starts. Although Alfredo Morelos isn't a bad substitute to bring on at any point, Johnny. And these these, these are the games he revels in, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can't believe that I forgot Malik Tillman. Honestly, I'm just I'm, <laughs> I'm having an absolute mare. I can't believe I did that. Um, yeah, no, he's been outstanding. He has to play. And um, what I like, the reason I like about um, uh, Tillman um, playing in that kind of right side is because uh, you know, essentially, you're not really playing on the right um, with Tavernier if he's pushed forwards. You're you're you're, you're almost pushed inside. Um, so I think that could give you. Both the graft and the energy and the and the runs of our field, but also have Tillman in there. But, but I mean, Tillman's playing regardless, obviously. Um, so I can't believe I got that wrong, and I'm going to I'm going to be loving that down for the next few days. Right? Um, and people are giving me giving me pelters on the quotes, which I deserve. I deserve these pelters. Um, Listen, it's easy to forget. There's so many attacking options, though, Johnny. I mean, you said it. You could play any one of a number of players, um, and, and you yeah. wouldn't necessarily weaken the side. John Lundstrom again said that uh, after the game at the weekend, saying that when they make subs, they strengthen the side. So Rangers have a, a really strong squad at the moment. Um, so yeah, I think whatever side starts the game this evening will be. Uh, a really strong one, um, but different uh, <laughs> different suggestions coming in uh, f- for uh, for the team. Everyone sort of agrees that Tillman has to start, and um, he's another one that's impressed the last, especially the last couple of games. Johnny, um, the two headers, the header at the weekend was sublime. I've got to say, um, it's an acute angle, and you can only put it in one way, and he does so with power. The leap against uh, Union was uh, ridiculous, uh, and I've got to say, I loved the the little. Uh, uh, thing in the fan zone uh, uh, to allow supporters to try and jump as high as him. It was, uh, uh, I was a, a great I was Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, listen, he could be a he could be a game changer in these these games, couldn't he? I think he's. Uh, I see a lot of supporters saying, "Just pay the money, pay the money, get him in now." Um, but he's had a good start to his career, hasn't he? Oh, he, he has. Um, uh, he, I mean, pay the money for him now. I think it's a little bit early. Yeah, to go down that route because you've got the option. So, so you can you can just wait. I mean, I remember um, and listen, Tillman's a lot better than this guy, but I remember um, Koulibaly arriving um, under Gerard, and he was absolutely yeah. outstanding for the first three or four games. I remember saying on a podcast, "Oh, 
just get this boy signed up. This boy's going to be worth 10 million quid. Uh, you know, get us, <laughs> and he, he just disappeared off the face of the planet um, and, and fell out of the plans quite quickly after that. But he had a sensational start, Cooler Billy. Um, so I don't think that's going to happen with Malik Tillman, to be honest. But um, I think uh, you've got to just wait and see where we are in December on that one. And if, yeah. if he's still playing the way he's playing at the moment, um, clearly it's something you would want to do. Yeah, I didn't realise he was going to be such a threat physically. Um, obviously, I read the scout reports and things like that, but the guy's a unit. He is solid. I knew he was tall, but he's 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 not just tall. He's he's kind of he's a powerfully built guy. He's broad shouldered, and he's clearly going to get goals in the air because he can jump like a salmon. I wonder, to be honest, Derek, if his future isn't as a number nine, you know, a target man who can do pretty much everything. He's not yeah. quick. Um, so that would be a problem. Um, but yeah, he's got a brilliant touch, he's excellent in the air. I think the guy has got so many, so many talents and so many abilities and can probably play so many positions that uh he's certainly going to be a really, really good uh yeah player for Rangers and, and, and one that I think will will make the club really good money. Um if if as we expect they, they do push the, the button at the end of the season and, and sign him up. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but we'll finish off. It' good to have Aldo back on. Uh, he says morning, lads. Sorry if not being on in a while. Good to have you back, uh, Aldo. Yeah, and we've got a, a PSV perspective. Uh, Broski please uh, has been in touch. A few comments here. He says uh, it'll be an amazing match with two amazing attacking squads who both score goals easy and show attacking prowess. Listen, I think I'm sure it's going to be a, a fantastic uh, festival of football. Is uh, Rick Elfrink, who I spoke to uh, the PSV journalist uh, the other day, uh, says it'll be a, a proper football party. I think uh, both fans look, both sets of fans looking forward to it. It's a, a real clash of two European heavyweights, uh, two iconic football clubs. Uh, and yeah, uh, the, the, the prize at stake is, is huge for Rangers and of course for, for PSV uh, as well. Um, if you're heading to the match tonight, uh, enjoy it. Uh, play your part, of course, as Johnny says. Um, we're that... Blue top and, and, and sing your heart out, and I'm sure uh, the boys in the park will do their best to try and get a positive result to take over to Eindhoven a week on Wednesday. And uh, we'll just finish off a uh, good thre- uh, friend of the uh, the show, Adam Thornton, gets in touch. No Lawrence, no party, so he's well on board the, the Tom Lawrence train. So uh, listen, I think he could have another. He could be a big player in, in these two uh, matches as well. He's another one that's impressed since uh, coming in, Johnny, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, he's been really, really terrific. There's no doubt about that. He's going to be a good player for Rangers. Derek, you called it. You called it early. You called it quickly. <laughs> the minute that he was linked, you said, oh, I'm having that. He'll be terrific. Get him in ASAP. I said, really? Tom Lawrence? I mean, Derby <laughs> County? You were like, no, trust me, I've seen him play twice. Uh, he was super both times. Yeah, top draw. And then once you looked into it, you realised that there was a player there and I, I, like, well, listen, I think Adam's spot on in terms of uh, Lawrence, what he brings to the table. But I don't know, my team, I'm trying to think about the specific way that PSV are going to play the game, are going to approach the game. Um, I think you want to make sure you win that midfield battle. You want to make sure you hold on to the ball. You want to make sure that you, when you get it back from them, that you can punish them by having the, the quality to, to play around them. Um Tom Lawrence is a really, really good player. It's fitting him in, isn't it? There's so many options now. Yeah, yeah. But like I say, good substitute to bring off the bench if, if, if need be. Uh, and uh, Broski plays it that the PSV uh, boy gets in touch. I've never experienced the Ibrox, so I'm curious how it is over there. Um, uh, it's, it's something else, uh, buddy. You, I'm, I'm sure it'll blow you away uh, if you're heading to the game uh, this evening. Okay, folks, that'll do us there. Uh, Joshua will be at the game for us uh, this evening. Uh, so we'll bring you all the usual uh, pre-match uh, reaction when the teams drop uh, from Ibrox as well as a uh, post-match reaction as well. Loads coming on the website uh, as we build up uh, to the game. Uh, so keep, stay tuned to all our social media accounts and the Rangers Review site. And of course, we've still got that offer on £2 for two months worth of content. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Um, okay, until then, uh, we'll speak to you soon. <laughs>